Hi, I'm Kwas Kwan Tong Azor, Primary 6 from Amy Primary School. For this time, we're still going on with ordinary differential equations. Well, in ordinary differential equations, let's sort of revise what types of ordinary differential equations we have got and at last are related to something that we are having right now. So the first of all, the most basic type of this ordinary differential equation. This is why the first derivative. That's how you add px, but it's not the most basic here. Now why is so here px, here y. So let's take a look at what type of ordinary differential equation is this. First order linear, homogeneous. So that means like this, so what kind of method do we use? So for this part, we're going to use separable ordinary differential equations. But what if I change it a little bit? I change it like this. It's not a zero, but we put qx. Now, qx is another function of x. First order, still linear. But here is non-homogeneous. And this means we'll have to use the integrating factor, the if. Okay, if. Integrating factor. Now, we have learned that before. How about I add something? y to the power of n at the back. So this part, first order, non-linear, non-homogeneous. Well, for this type of equation, is what we're having right now. The Bernoulli equation. Okay, so for this Bernoulli equation, for right now, I'm just write out that general form. But actually, it's already up there. So, in the past, we have done like specific questions about what is px, what is qx, what is n. But right now, let's try something new. What if we're not given any of them? We only have it like this. Okay, that means that I have to think about the different cases. For example, well, the most important part is this n. So this n is the one that changes the whole thing. px, we can leave it as px. qx, we also can leave it as qx. But this n, we need to go by case work. Case number one, n. What if n equals zero. If n equals zero, so you'll get something like this. Now, we have already said about this just now. We're going to use the integrating factor now. Right now, we are going to solve it out. The if. So at this part, e to the power of integrate px with respect to x. But for this part, we'll just leave it like this since we do not know what is px. Leaving like this is fine, okay? So this is your if. Then we times it on both sides. Like this. For this part, we have used. Now, what did we use? Yes, total differentiation.
Yeah, after that, both sides we can integrate. Okay. So now we get something like this. So right now, at this part after that, it's just to integrate. Well, for this part, we'll still leave it like this since we do not know any one of them. Then we have this arbitrary constants here. Then for y, you just divide this to the other side. So you get something like this. Okay, and this is your y for case 1. Next part, case 2. Now for case 2, is also a very basic number. Let's just say for example, so right now here, right now is 1. Okay, well, why do you use 1 now? This is 1, why is it so special? Let's take a look at it. Wait a second. Here is y. Here is also y. How about moving this to the other side? And you'll become like this. Well, at this part, what happens here? Did we say about this just now? Isn't that you can just say as y prime plus px y equals zero? Now isn't it pretty much the same? So that means right now here we're going to use a separable ordinary differential equations. So the first thing is just to move this to the other side. At the same time, y prime will change it into dy dx. Okay, like this. Then after that, this part, if you don't want to write an extra negative outside, you can times the negative inside, then you'll get like this. Okay, so next part. Y divide to the other side. Then this dx we times to the other side. Then right now here at both sides, we can integrate. This part, we can sure we find it. Long y. Okay, this part get long y. Then this part just stays the same. Except that you get this extra c. Then y, for this c, you can put it as c1. Now, how is that so? e to the power of this whole thing. But look here, this is plus. And you have e to the power, then here's a plus. That means it is actually times. Now, e to the power of a constant is still a constant. So you can put it as a constant in front here. So for this part, you have found the C. I mean, you, have, you actually have found the Y. So these first two cases, we're done. Then next, so I'll erase this first case.
Next one. Case three. What if? And what if n is an even number? Yes, what if n is an even number? So that means it still be like this, but we'll have to let. Now what do we have to let? This u be y to the power of 1 minus n. But this part you don't have to worry since this power is an odd. So yes, you can change it. Then after that is the first derivative of y. So you get something like this. Next part, sub them inside. Okay, so you get something like this. But after that, from this part, we want to try to use something. Now, how about let's change it, first part, to u prime. Then this part, u minus this n, so that means this power is just 1. Then this part you also don't have. Okay, so get something like this. And is this so familiar? Well, isn't that a similar something similar to the case you've done in one right now? What does that mean? In case one we've used integrating factor. Now we can use integrating factor, but how? Isn't it? This part is first order. This is non-linear and non-homogeneous. But in case one, it is first order linear. And okay, the first one is zero, so it's also non-homogeneous. And that means it's only changing from non-linear to a linear. This is linear, ordinary differential equation. Okay, so you get something like this. So just to use the integrating factors now. For this integrating factor, do you know what are all of these? But wait, 1 minus n, isn't it a constant? So we can just write it like this, right? Since 1 minus n is a constant. Okay, so this will just be your if. Delta you times on both sides. Okay, so right now here, this is your if. Okay, so right now, case 2, we can also get rid of it. Okay, so right now we have this part, 
Then after that first part again, total differentiation. Total differentiation, okay. Wait. Okay, let me just write this fine. So this part of the D is from the DX. So let me see also have another DX. Just that you can again both sides integrate. Okay, after that, it's just to integrate that. Then here, since you integrate already, that means you have another constant. Now this u is y to the power of 1 minus n. But still we can still find y since you can just move the power to the other side. So that means here you get 1 over 1 minus n. Okay, next is from there. But this part you already have a 1 over 1 minus n. So that means just this integration part. Okay, so this y is what you'll get. So this, so this will be for case 3. Oh, so let me just explain this last part again. This first part, okay. But this second part, because here this power, this power move over, so then we need both sides divide. So that means this part you'll still get a negative. But wait, for this part, this E, you move it over. That means this power you get negative, here is a 1 minus N, but you, you already have this 1 minus N. So this 1 minus N, the power you divide it on both sides, so that means this part, you'll, it'll also be divided. So that's why here, okay, let me try this Okay, so then we get it like this. Okay, so next point we'll go on to case four. Now case four is if n is odd. But this odd, at the same time, n is not one. Okay, because one you can consider as odd, but zero might be even, might not be even. Okay, so for this part, first of all, we will still have to let. Let, but this part is a little bit different. So we get y to the power of 1 minus n, same thing. 
But what's so special here? Odd. Why minus an odd number? You get an even number. But be careful, even number, there will be a plus minus. Positive or negative. So, now what happens here? Do we use positive or negative or both? So let's see, if it is positive, but wait, if it is positive, aren't these two the same? So that means right now here will be the case for negative. Okay? Because positive will be the same as case 3. So that means over here, y prime Wait, this is a u prime Okay, so this is what you get. Then next part. So what do you have here? Then after that, this. Okay. But wait a second here. Don't forget this negative. And then here also have another negative. Okay, then at this part, here first, u prime. u prime. But wait a second, here negative, they all can uh, cancel out. And here will still be u since y minus is n is the same as the denominator. Then after that, at this part, y minus n, then qx. Then this part cancel out. Is there any, any similarities here? Wait. This part is the same as this part. So that means this will be the same as case 3 and that means all the parts below will be the same okay so that's why when this power even though it, like it is even right but you don't need to write this plus minus and here we have shown why you don't need to write that plus minus so that means okay let me see But wait, if this is odd, at the last step, you'll still have a little bit of difference. At the last step, you'll still have a plus minus. So the last step. Wait. This plus minus says this is even. So that means it's the part that is different is just this plus minus. Okay, so for this lesson, I'll end it here. I hope that you can understand so far. So if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your watching.